This is required practical 11, where we use quantitative Benedict's reagent to find the concentration in an unknown sample of urine. We're starting at the point where you've already made your dilution series and you're now adding the Benedict solution. Unlike qualitative Benedict solution, where you can pretty much add as much as you want, and you can boil it as much as you want, and you get the desired result, the brick red precipitate, this method is very precise. You need to add one mil of Benedict's solution instead of the prescribed two mils, and you need to place it in boiling water for three minutes only, not five minutes as prescribed by AQA Practical. Giving the solutions and the Benedict's reagent a shake is very much part of the procedure. Ensure to write this when you're describing the experiment in an exam. Then you're going to place all tubes at exactly the same time into the boiling water bath. And you're going to boil them, not heat them at 90 degrees, you're going to boil them for not five minutes, but three minutes. And you can see that as the time progresses, some of them are becoming increasingly opaque. At three minutes, you're going to remove them all from the heat. So as you can see, some of the tubes have just become a little bit opaque. They haven't turned green, yellow, brown or brick red. We're now going to measure these in a colorimeter and plot the absorbance on the y-axis against concentration on the x-axis. So a completely different test and we've measured the absorbance in the colorimeter and now we're going to plot the graph remembering that the concentration of our knowns is going to go on the x-axis. I've got to work out the scale, I've got to take as much of the graph paper as I possibly can and on the y-axis I'm going to have absorbance. Now in the last video there were a couple of pointers about the graph work that I made and one of them that was that the scale didn't fill very much of the page and the scale could have been bigger. However, I can see that that is what is happening here. We're using the maximum scale available to us. However, going up in units of threes on the x-axis is not a good idea because when you try to read the values off, the intermediate values later on, it becomes very difficult to come up with an accurate number. However, the scale on the y-axis is looking really good. It's using the maximum available. The other points I made last time have been adjusted here. If you remember, we talked about the zeros, labelling the y and the x axes. We said two zeros were needed to label two lines, not just one zero in the corner. And we've got full labels and units. Now at this point, we can see that great care has been taken to plot two points that are fairly close together. We're using a ruler to make sure that we don't stray from the uh, grid mark that we want. But this is why I suggest that you don't use a metal ruler, that you use a transparent one, because that helps you keep in the right place much, much better. Additional to that, these crosses that are being drawn really should be bigger. They're too small. We want a nice big cross that's at least half the size of the boxes that surround it. And as our data points join together to form a relationship, we can see that the fourth data point doesn't quite fit the pattern. So what you should do is go back to the colorimeter and check that reading again. And if it gives the same or similar result, then you can repeat that dilution for that particular concentration and do that test again.